I thought Natasha was high maintenance, John. <laughs> I don't and know what I she's talking you. about. <laughs> Moi. <laughs> Hello and welcome Hello. to Natasha Makes. Natasha does not make, however, in this little series that she we're doing, doesn't John. Know. This is all about us. I know. Because I know. We, we fell in love, love with the project. Well, it was us. We found it. We fell in love with the project. Well, I found it. John found it. Neither of us knew the other one had found it. And I had it ready to show to Tash. And then John just picked me to the post by doing a little video call and going, look what I found. This is the problem when you schedule <laughs> meetings for exciting things. She had it scheduled for like an hour after I did it. So rude. So rude. Terrible. Anyway, welcome, 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 welcome. It's lovely oh, to have you back. We're in week is. two. Um, by now, in theory, you have cut out your fabric. Well done. Yep. Show if two. you haven't, that's okay. Don't worry. There's plenty of time. You can come back and watch these at any time you like. Um, yeah. Last time, in case you missed it, and you can catch up the shows, they're there, you know. Well, in you the popped ether. on a playlist, haven't you? Ah, yeah, she's you know. good like that. They're in the ether, it's all fine. If you missed the first show, we looked at cutting, yep. didn't we? We looked at the planning of the quilt and the cutting out. Yep. So, you know. And storage and how you're going to do it. And now sure. this is important where you need to have made sure mm -hmm. you've got everything all lined up, ready to go. Because if you've managed to get that process done perfectly, yeah. it's all in the planning. Because once you've got the planning sorted, you are all fine. Definitely. And we encouraged everyone if they felt like it. If they felt so inclined to get ahead with the cutting of all of their fabrics, except perhaps the peacock. The peacock. And um, we'll perhaps talk a little bit about that, John. But if you have cut the peacock, or 1,164 squares, well done. I did as well for mine personally. Came in, saw this and thought, that's a clever idea. So it's not just you who will look at this and go, oh my goodness, that's genius. I had no part in it, it's genius, so yes. And it still looks the same once you've done it. Very clever. It, it's very clever. Very clever. Very clever. Not my idea. And it's only possible because we're using quilters grid. Quilters grid, yes. If you were doing this as normal piecing, this wouldn't work. Sure. Um, uh, and I do think that if you are going to do it as normal piecing without the quilters grid, make sure you do stick to the squares, otherwise yes. it is going to look funny. And, the, and for one the, bit will be longer than the other. And in the interests of just explaining what that looks like in the cutting of the squares, I've got the pads now. We do indeed. We do the indeed. peacock, if you are going to do traditional piecing, and, and no judgment, if that's what you want to do, it does involve, is it 1,164 yes. um, squares of peacock? Just going to check, John. It is. Just to make sure. Yeah. She's it's, questioning do you know how me. both of us go? 1,164. It's, it's a lot of squares. It's only 82 widths of fabric. It's a lot of squares. It's 82 widths of fabric. You can do that. It's a lot of That's you if you've been able to get 82 widths of fabric. I know. <laughs> well, this fabric's really difficult to get it hold really of. It really is. It really is. And we is. touched on this in the first show, but we do have these fabrics depending on whether you've all been buying them, because, you know, these don't are Don't leave them behind. If you shows. want them, you can't, don't hang around. Make sure, sure you get them. Us getting these in, it, it's not a case of, you know, us just going, oh, no, we don't want to buy anymore. We bought the supplier out of a lot of these colours. So if we've run out, th it, there's none at the supplier to get. Mm. And it takes months for them to restock sometimes. It a, does. You know, really, really long time. So if you do it want additional three months fabrics, when they had the last one that sold And that out. wasn't too bad. It's been worse before. Mm, it has. So if you do want to buy a specific colour to use for your binding, to add a sashing, perhaps extra to projects, back, you extra just saw projects. it and fell in love with it. You the just, country yeah. red's coming home with me. Just saying. <laughs> you got your bundle and you went, oh, this is beautiful. But it is. Or you got your t you got your tilde stash out and you had a look at the other, you know, the planes with it, the the solids, and you went, oh, this just here, gorgeous. this would look great with loads of my stash. Then if we have it available, cut to order, I'd, I'd get it now. Um, and <clears throat> who wouldn't want this in their stuff? Oh, I know. Oh. And the, but the great thing is, is they work so well with the pattern fabric as well, because the last thing you want to do is be able to get them and not use them, because the pattern collection is just breathtaking in every it collection is. she's done. It is. We're and every time to... she produces a new one, I fall yeah. more in love with that one as well. The Chic Escape, the latest collection oh, from Tilda. See, the Coastal. Natasha's favourite. The Coastal was mine. Oh, and see, that was beautiful. Really My was. friend Vicky loved the Coastal one as well. But She's got you such know, good Natasha. taste. He was a friend, ah, same see? fabric. <laughs> <laughs> but you know Natasha, she loves a big peacock. Hmm? And that uh, Chic <laughs> Escape, it had a Don't we all? lovely big <laughs> Don't we all, darling? <laughs> hey. Never! We do have some beautiful Tilda fabrics. Um, and again, they, really are. they aren't, you know, Tilda is just eternally popular. And if it's sold out, it's sold out. We did buy extra of the peacocks. Yes. So by the time this goes to air, you may, may not still be. be able to get that. May not be. We'll but the thing with the solids is that if and when they are in stock, yeah. they are perpetual. 
they are doing them. They do add them every now and then, but it's yeah. always the case. I'm a massive hoarder of fabric. I do believe that quilting and fabric hoarding, collection, curating are two totally separate hobbies. And stamp collectors yeah. don't use their fabrics. Why no. should fabric collectors? They don't use their stamps. They don't. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that one there. Oh. It's been a long week. It <laughs> it's probably only it Monday, has. isn't it? No, Who I knows what, what day, day it is? is it? What day is it? What time is it? I don't even know anymore, no. John. Well, let's do some housekeeping first. Yes. Okay, what's really, really important with this yes you are going to need a new needle in your sewing machine. You are now going to do the dreadful task. You are going to open up your sewing machine. You're going to give it a good old clean. Get your little brush out, the little bobbin space, clean out your sewing machine. Clean out your bobbin case, clean out the whole area, make it nice and shiny, put the oil in where it's supposed to go, follow the machine guidelines for that. Just give your machine a little bit of a spa treatment for this and change the needle. It's really important that you do this mm -hmm. and I would suggest when you finish this project change the needle as well. There's a reasonable amount of yeah. sewing but it is quite, uh, you're going through an, uh, an adhesive um, interfacing so you do want to then just make sure that you change it afterwards and also once you finish this project, once you've sewn all of these together, go and clean your machine out again. It's just good housekeeping. We really Most is. of us don't do it. No. I don't. I'm the no. first one to put my hand up, but I'm telling you now, do it now because it'll mean yeah. everything just sews a lot nicer. And then once you finish the project, if there is a tiny little bit of um, the adhesive in your uh, bobbin plate, you get it out before it's yeah. been in there for too long. Don't so just wait. get rid of it. Don't wait for your machine to start misbehaving exactly. because that's normally the first sign that most of us have if that you're we should skipping perhaps clean stitches, it out. Yes, if you're you skipping know. stitches, your stitches aren't mm. going quite the length they should be, just stop, take 10 minutes, make yourself a brew and just clean everything out and start again. It makes sure, And change the needle. It's much, much mm. easier. But this project is beautiful enough that it deserves that it really bit of does. attention. And Needle size, yeah. um, you do, these are the We do them in 90s. an 80 and a 90. Yeah. I would use a slightly larger needle. I normally use the 7010. The 7010 worked beautifully stitching these together. It's mm -hmm. not a problem. If you are used to using an 80, maybe pop up to a 90. Only reason being is you are stitching through two pieces of fabric as well as the quilter's grid. Yeah. And when you're doing the lines the other way, it's a little bit thicker. So having that little bit thicker shank does make it a little bit easier. Mm. So you, we've got the 90, um, these are 100, of 100 aren't they? Yeah. It's a pack of 100, but these are the 90 size, and you do the 80 as well. We do. So if you're used yeah. to sewing with a 70, pop into an 80. If you're used to sewing with an 80, pop into a 90. There's not that much yeah. to it, but for me, I just like having a big box of these. So as and when my needle's playing up, or I just feel like something's heading towards being wrong, they cost so little per needle. Yeah. Pop it out, change it, John, makes life a lot these easier. These are phenomenal value. They're you phenomenal. Know, I've, got th I've got four or five of them on 20 my desk. It's 20 odd quid, and you're getting. Oh a hundred needles in exactly. there. We've had Gary from Juki give us advice on accessories for machines all along the way and he has tested these needles and thought they were fabulous. Yeah. So we do stock them, the, you know, the, the getting them back in, they come in, they fly out, they come in, they, they fly out. So, so if they're not on the website at the minute, they're out of stock, sure. check back in a few weeks. Sure. They will come back. We and give always us a restart. shout, you know, give us a shout and see when we're expecting them exactly. back in because our supplier will normally give us an idea of when they'll be back in. Um, and we'll, we'll certainly make and sure that we nice let you know. it's always nice to have a little chat with Emma. Yeah. Emma. Emma. Gemma. Why am I calling you Emma? Honestly. Who is Emma? And do you know? Well, I'm, whoever Emma is. I wouldn't mind, but you've not even had a gin. How do you know? Well, no. <laughs> Very good I've been to my not car, darling. That I've witnessed, although you've been sipping on that water bottle <laughs> rather well. It's, that's water. <laughs> it's not water. Now, we're going to show you, now, we're going to do, we're going to jump around a tiny bit, only because what I want to show you first is, in your pattern, on page six, you have, this is now blown up to A3, you have got the grid of what we're doing for number one. Brilliant. So if you hold that there, please, ma'am, we are looking oh, at I this shall. one over here, and you can tell... Bom, bom, bom. Look at that. That is it there. So you can tell from the image to this, this is what we're going to be making. Amazing. Now this one looks relatively simple because you haven't got a huge amount of colors. But the one thing I tell people whenever you're doing this pattern is to take it slow. Could I trouble you for um, that ruler over the, you see that little ruler over there? The purpley thing, that one there. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I, did, I did forget to bring in my... I have a board that I 
print this onto an A4 mm -hmm. and I put it on my little board and I've got one of these that flops on the front and you can see through there over there and I put that over there knowing exactly which colour was what. Oh, like people having the typing. It's that's that exactly what, I, it's bring exactly it down and then what it is, that yeah. thing there. And if you I don't know. have that, a normal A4 ruler, put a piece of masking tape at the top, piece of masking tape at the top, at the bottom and just move it down yes. as you're going along like that. It will make your life a Let's lot easier. Let's have a little look in the overhead. Thank you, ma'am. And we can just see. There and if you go. do this, you just slide it up and down and you can then see. And if you're just using a normal ruler, you'll have your tape measure between. It just makes your life a lot easier. Now, as you can tell that we're looking here, thank you very much for the gauge. It's okay. Um, you will see over here, you should have put 14 long squares along there. But as you can tell, there are not 14 oh, squares here. Why would you cut 14 squares? That is squares. just a 28 inch by 2 inch piece of fabric. Sure. Okay. And then if you wanted to do it this way, you could do 22 inches by 10 inches as one single sure, piece. Yeah. So when we said in episode one, don't cut your background fabric yet, this is why. This is entirely your choice. And what I'm going to do in a few minutes is I will show you how it does not affect what you're doing here. It will still look like that because you're stitching on the back of the quilter's grid. But so you will always only, have that grid. Only, John. Only if you're using the quilter's grid. Only if you're using the quilter's grid, sure. yes. If you're doing this as normal piecing, this tutorial is not for you. This is no. only to be used with the quilter's grid. So we've I mean, gone a little bit ahead of ourselves. watch. Of course, you're going to be got an hour of entertainment chat. with our lovely Gemma. <laughs> and I'll be here yapping around talking about some other nonsense or other. <laughs> oh, John. You do make me chuckle, though. You know, with saying about cleaning the machine out, um, I Very haven't cleaned my machine points. for ages. Oh, the first time I did mine, I was like, what is all this belly button fluff inside the machine? <laughs> <laughs> it's just exactly like But though, it isn't is, it? it really is. Um, I know the first thing people are going to say when they get to clean their machine out is, where's the little brush gone? Yep. We do have a sewing machine maintenance kit, a hemline sewing machine maintenance really kit. really nice. If you've lost your little brush, your little screwdriver. It's like the one with a little bit of oil in as you've well. Got, you can get the oil as well. So yep. we've got the kit. We've got machine oil. We have all these accessories available. Because so I lose mine on a regular basis. Now, I, I, I understand this is a little extravagant. I have 47, 48 sewing machines. Oh, shush. No, I do. It's obscene. It's obscene. It's obscene. And a long arm quilter, for crying out loud. And an embroidery machine. Oh, but that's machine. not included. N and an embroidery machine. So I think I'm hovering around 50. 50 yeah. So when you're looking for my gorgeous jukies, you're like, oh, where's that now? So, and then, of course, I have to phone my lovely lady, Josephine, who is normally hidden everything from me in a safe place. So having a she's universal... She's the hider of all things, She's the she? hider of everything. Yeah. I love her too. Hi, she hid my lunch the other day. Did I tell you? I had bitten out my sandwich. Was she went trying to help? help a customer, and she put it in the fridge, and I thought I was going insane. <laughs> she thinking, was trying to help. She was trying I'm to keep really it cool hungry. for you. That's exactly what she was doing. She's so helpful But I thought I'd lost time. my mind, because my lunch had been put in the fridge. Oh anyway, dear. we digress. But these wonderful universal kits, they work for everything. Every sewing machine. So having that around makes Thank it a do. lot easier. Now, what we've done is we've got these into different stages. As you've seen, this is now our block one. Okay, Beautiful. this one hasn't been sewn yet, and we will get to that oh, in a few moments. I'll hold it for you. Oh, no, it's fine. Oh, no, I feel like I'm on the generation game. <laughs> and then was we've it got lay number your cards right where the ladies Is this the number cards? two or number four? Ooh. Oh, I've got to check. I think now. that's two. It is indeed. Yes. So this is number two. So once you've stitched sideways, you can see how it's a lot. Um, I might need to We're swap the these with you, Gemma. Yeah. <laughs> the wrong way <laughs> Being a little taller makes it a little Aww. easier, bless you. So you can see the difference in what you're actually eating up in the fabric when you do the stitching is quite substantial. <laughs> so you then do, when you do the, the stitching to the side, so you can see on this one, I've done the stitching across. And I thought it was important to show you across and down. So we'll come back to this in a few minutes because I just wanted to show you how we lay those Lovely. out. So that's numbers one, two, and then I've started with number three as well. So I thought it was important to just show you how you were going to do these together sure. because there's a little bit of exercise that you need to do. We've also done number four. I'm going to ask if we can perhaps Ooh, go to an overhead. overhead. Sure. Now the reason we're going to an overhead here is it does become, you can see that that's number one, that's number two, that's number three, and that's number four. Now if you are just starting out and you're not feeling quite so confident, do number one and do number three. Do those first because they are a lot more 
background, if I can just take that yeah. one. There's a lot more background piecing in this. It's a lot more forgiving than there is in something like that. And yeah. you can tell there are a lot more squares. Now, it doesn't really matter. If you are doing the square method and you just want to plop the squares in, it isn't that difficult. You can just plop them down, put the iron on, done. If you're doing bigger pieces like this, that's absolutely fine as well. You can see here with the ginger fat, I'm sure that's ginger. I can't remember. Hang on, that is mm. number four, number 17. I think that is ginger. 17, we'll have a look. Oh, she's going to check. I will. 17 is, oh, it's telling me how many I need of number 17 on that page. 75 squares, she could have 17. 75 ginger. squares, which I'm 99 percent. Solid ginger. ginger. Well Can done. Can you tell I've gotten a little, well a little close done. to the fabric here? You so have. if you did have more pieces along there, like you need four squares, you can cut an eight inch strip by two inches. Over here, we've got two, so that's four by two. And that's absolutely fine because you'll see in a few moments when we start sewing these together, they do work. So what I thought today would be good is before we actually start sewing, let's do the exercise. Now we've done one, two, three, and four. We're now going to do number five, and I'm going to show you from start to finish how it is we do the whole exercise. From start to finish, because I think it's important that we show you the whole way. Wonderful. <clears throat> now, the two things that I absolutely love, I don't know if we've got these in stock. Okay. These are from the lovely Alistair, um, House these of Alistair. flew out. We had this particular colorway just for us. We have some really tiny ones. They're great amazing. as a, a mobile project. But they really are because yeah. the minute, because Tash gave me one and I looked at this and thought, you must be mad. I'm not putting that on my coffee table or my dining room table. Are you mad? I'm not. My husband will murder me. <laughs> but then I thought to myself, I'm going to try this. Natasha has said it would, and it does. It does work. So you can take, this is a beautiful oak top table. It's gorgeous. But the, and the this is the section. Of your press, though, on this nook, oh my goodness, it's insane. Oh. So you can see this is the cutting mark area here. If you want to go to the overhead, I can show well, everybody. There's no cracks, there's no okay. burns. That's where our pressing has And this is where the pressing mat has been for what, two and a half, three years? Yeah. And that is literally all we've done is put this mat down and iron on top of it. And that's me, yep. Sarah Payne, there's Tash, no, Gemma, the gorgeous there's Jane. There's no heat damage. Nothing. No damage at all. There's plenty of scrapey scrapiness where we've but scraped we that things everywhere. across it. But yep. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest you get one of these Teflon sheets. Now, yes. We all do it, we all have an iron, we go and put anything on it to an adhesive, and we end up with a tiny little smudge of glue, gets on the iron, and then it damages your fabric. So these are not that expensive. My only tip to this would be, on one end, one side, in an indelible pop marker, I would put glue, and on the other side, I would put not glue. <laughs> now that's important because the number of times we put that down, mm. go like this, turn it round, turn it, mm. got glue all over your iron. The whole point of it is that if it sticks onto one side, you don't get it on the other. This is not directional. It is absolutely gorgeous piece. <clears throat> But I always write on mine, glue and not glue, yeah. because that way then, if there is any gluey bits, it stays on the other yeah. side. It just makes your life that Perfect, little bit easier. John. Top tips, John. Top tips. Top tips. And I what comes in tips. really handy is, if I hide this under my cutting mat, we're doing <laughs> unit <that>. five. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that's another. <clears throat> if Let's you wanted to, you now use the edge of your Teflon sheet as a guide oh, as to which one you're doing. look at that. Now, if you are lucky enough to have help, someone would have prepared wow, a, a tray. little tray for you of all the numbers of the fabrics you need. It wasn't me, John. Well, I, I, I'm not going to say it who was, it was. Uh, it was lovely. It was the lovely Lizzie. She's amazing. Now, what I would double check is make sure that you've got 28 squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this is perfect. We've got 28, half on this side and half on the other side. 28 and a squiddly bit. 28 and a squiddly bit. Now I know that my first piece is number 26. So I take that and I line it up perfectly there. And by perfectly, you can just see the outline of these lines along there. So I know that this is not my start point mm -hmm. here. I know that that's my point there. And I know that this is 36 inches wide because I counted it in the previous episode. John, just very quickly to yes. interject, <clears throat> how do we know we've got the right side facing up? That is very important. So exactly like we've got it now, 
If you see you the grid, as well. you can lift it. Oh, can you pop oh, it down? Go back over to overhead. Sorry, my darling. No, it's all right. I thought we were going to lift it. If the other way. If you can see the grid this dark, it's the wrong way around. Sure. If you see it like this, where it, you can just see the grid, it's the right way around. And when you run your finger over it, and now we can do your close-up. There we are. <clears throat> you can tell you've got, a, it's, it's dull and bumpy. That's the right side that you should be gluing on. But if it's smooth and darker, that's not the side that you're doing it on. That's the finished edge. So sure. this will be the right side at the end of the project, but right now, the gluey bit is the right side for the exercise that we're about to do. So the bumpy side feels <coughs> bumpy, John. It really does. It's got glue it's got on the it. adhesive on it. And what's going to happen is, once I have laid out my first row, that their gorgeous Gemma, <laughs> that one over there, is going to get, bring her giant <laughs> big hot iron over there, I and she's going to go and glue these all down. You really aren't about the ironing, are you, oh, John? No. Always gets me to do is pressing. Always. Always. Because you're so lovely and you do it for me. You've got an ironing person at home. I do. I is do. it Andrew or do you have no, an no, we have, we have oh, a company that come in and do perfect. all these things. Perfect. It's, because you do always look very pristine in these fabulous shirts. I steal them from my husband. It's I wonderful. Know, I, I know, I know. It's got to be done. Now, perfect. on the pattern, on page seven, you will see under figure G, unit five, you will see the code of where we are. So we know that 26 is the first one. And then on my little board over here, number 37 is this purpley color. You then take that and you're putting number 37 almost exactly up to it. Okay? And any little fuzzy bits like that. Don't worry. Don't pull them. Don't pull them. Don't Leave worry them at all. Then we're going to number 23, which is over there. Number 23. And then we've got number one. If there is no number on the color, it is number one. Then we've got number 43. It's basically a giant color your own jigsaw puzzle with Amazing. fabric. Amazing. Now, here, it doesn't matter if you overlap. It doesn't matter if there's a tiny little gap. Just don't go to, if you've got more than a, an eighth of an inch gap between it, try and just then pick another piece or make it work, only because it'll then have such a small seam once you've sewn everything together. So this is a <gasps> We've project. only got number one of these. Hey. We've only got one of those, number 31. So this particular project is <coughs> one of those things that you could have a well-intentioned and well-behaved small person sat next to you handing these to you. You could. Yes. Just got to keep an eye on them, make sure well, they're not. Well, I'm not. I have never having had a small person under my control. I think it is best that anybody <laughs> with a small best. person should give advice in that department. <laughs> I am not getting involved. Well, normally I'm I would tell my husband to go to another country. <laughs> I want to be entirely alone while I do this, not talking and blathering on about nonsense <laughs> as I lay this all out. Lovely. Just to make sure that I've got it right. So now when you're doing this and you will get to a point where you are actually losing con losing track, count your numbers. So I've got number 26, 37, 23, 1, 43, 31, 36, 30, 37. Okay? Lovely. And then just move your little bit over there. So I know that I've got number 43. Well, there's another use for your needles. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's just a case of I know that there are expensive things out there that you can buy, but uh, you know a no. piece of paper and a thing like that works just as well. No need, no need. And you're going to then build all of these fourteen rows. No, it's not eighteen rows as you go along. Number thirty-four, thirty-four. Can you see thirty-four, thirty-four? But I, like, I do I like I'm think at the bingo, John. it is. That's exactly it. But it does help tremendously having it all laid out in a sheet like this and everything laid out that when you do want to get number 27, you just then go to where 27 is numerically in your little pile and you can then just do it from there nice and simply. Oh, I think and we'll then lose last, last but not least square. is number 36. But well, we're going to lose your last square on the overhead, unfortunately. You'll have to no, trust him. No, we're not. Just Skiddly it this way a little bit. Exactly. Just, a, just a smidge. Technical terms everywhere today, John. There we are. We've got two squids. That well known there. measurement, the squidge. So I'm going to move that round there. It's that moment where you pray Gemma doesn't knock it over. Oh, <laughs> there you go. What are you so we've got to everything say, there. John. Now, with this, <laughs> there are two things to remember. First of all, I always use a sheet. You don't have to, use what works for you. The most important, most important, and I think people need to see my face as I'm going like this. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> the most important thing, you are not ironing. You literally, you take it and you drop it. One, two, three, four, five, pick up. 
you slide over and five. Do not go like that. Do not go like that. You literally down, don't move it. No smushing. No smushing. No sliding, no smushing, no, no, smushing, no, gliding, no, no, no nothing. Sliding, no I'm nothing. I'm going to slide this over here <laughs> because that there Gemma's come in with an iron. Apparently, I, apparently I am. Yeah, apparently I am. Oh, you're moving to me now. Isn't and it? they come closer you? if you want to do well, that. Look, Whatever to works to for you. To you. Whatever works to for you. you. Oh my gosh. Ow. That's really hot. <laughs> it's an iron, John. <laughs> no, that's hotter than normal. It's an iron. The problem John. with this iron is it's either molten lava. I'll hold the flex. There we go. Right. So we hold it down. One, two, three, four, five. And we lift up. Lovely. One, two, three, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. Screenshot? Why? Yep. So that so your lovely long suffering husband. Oh, he, he can knows. See I've told him many times. With an iron. He, okay. I've told him many times I can press but not iron. He, he was fully informed before we got <laughs> married, though. He can never deny knowing the information. Okay, so lovely. I'm now going to put that back in its yeah. hot. Right, so now you've got the Teflon sheet. You're now just tearing the Teflon sheet back. Well, let's go overhead so people can see okay. do that. And the squares so did not come off. So all of these are glued on. <laughs> but you get to this point over here where they're not glued on. So again, remember, glue side, not glue side. You then just put your Teflon sheet over there. I'm sliding this over ever so slightly. And then we do the last little section in the corner over here. Oh, I moved it. Silent counting to five this time, John. Well, you see, I was trying to come up with a song, and I'm like, I love Tilda, I love Tilda, <laughs> Tilda is lovely, buy it all, buy it all. And there you go. <laughs> see, I just, I just gone, John, to one, two, three, four, five. Oh, you know. you're much more musical Ridiculous. than I am. Much more musical. Are we keeping the iron here? Uh, no, we can take it away for you if you like. <laughs> I don't mind. So there we go. That is our first row. Now, Beautiful. if you don't believe me, they're not falling off. John. They're not falling off. So you know oh, you've done it right. Oh, I'd have loved so hard if they had. And if they had, that's fine. <laughs> now, the thing with the quilter's grid is the more, this is one of those projects where I know that people will get bored and they will think, oh, I can't be bothered to do that today. This is one of those projects where it is actually a lot better to do one block, sew it. Yeah. One block, sew it. Yeah. But be consistent. We'll get to that in a few minutes. It'll keep you interested as well. But it does. Yeah. And it's so mindful. And you just get to just chill out and relax. Lovely. I am going to have to ask you to move the iron, I've just realised, because yep. we have to move the box of colours in. Lovely. Right. Row two. The row two. So just like we did before, we're then going to start colouring in as we go. And you can see all I'm doing is blank one's sliding one. in over here, as you say. Blank one is number one. Great. And then number 25, which is the fern, if I'm not mistaken. We should play a game. Oh, shall I, have the, shall I have that? And I can tell everyone which colour's which, John. That'd be a bit efficient, wouldn't it? But the thing with this is I love the fact that if you wanted to make your own pixelation with this, there are so many different apps online that you can use sure. to build your own pixelation, which is extraordinary. 25. Amazing. 25, 25 pine. is pine. 24 before it was solid, was the was um, sage green. Oh, page green. Mm. 37. 37 is our aubergine. 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 43. Grape. 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 All sounds terribly healthy all of a sudden. 25, okay. back to the fern. It is back to the pine. Pine. Yeah, 25 is pine. Uh, pine. pine. I said pern then. Where did, did pern come from? That was I like know, we've all been coming out with fern. new words today. Oh, we have. And 29. Sky teal. This is a beautiful colour. Really lovely. And I have to say, for mine, I'm thinking of backing it in that colour. Are you? That would be 34. beautiful. 34 is light blue. And I tell you, when you start putting these into place and you feel the luxurious feel of this fabric, it's just gorgeous. Uh oh, the last number 29. Oh, lovely sky teal. Sky teal. And then we're on to number 34 again. Light blue. With our light blue. Yeah. The pixelated look of this quilt is just, oh, it's just gorgeous, fabulous, isn't, isn't it? it? I love it. 
And for me, it reminds me of a cross stitch. I think I said yes, that in the it last does. show as well. Just well, that's why it. they called it the embroidery flower. Yeah, exactly. So that's you can see I've got the whole row there. I do just go through and check, um, just double check it back. I was checking as I go. It just makes more sense. I'd rather check and not have an issue mm -hmm. than go back and having to peel off. If you have to peel off, you have to peel off. Makes sense, John. But we rather triple check and get it right. Marvellous. And I'm aware not everybody has a giant studio in order to <laughs> put all these places <laughs> really, down. John? But what I would say is go to your ironing board one row at a time. Just yeah. do it slowly. There is no rush at all. And this is meant to be fun and enjoyable. The first row was always the hardest because you had so little space to get it on. The second row is always a lot easier because you've got a bit more space to be putting everything down. And I love Tilda. I love Tilda. <laughs> I think counting to five might be slightly more reliable. Well, it does sound a little less maniacal, doesn't it? I would say so. Yeah. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. This is what friendship's like, John, isn't it? Exactly. This is what we do. We run on insults and general caffeine. Mickey taking. I want caffeine. Yeah. And exhaustion. Our entire warehouse runs on caffeine and sarcasm, you know. Well, I've been a victim of that today, yes, that's for yes, sure. absolutely. And I've loved every minute of it. <laughs> well, you, your mum was in today. My mum was in today, lovely Eds. It's She's a lovely. good old family business here. We had little Emily and Freddie unloading some stuff. Well, I was a bit day. sad they weren't in I today. Know. No, they've been unloading right. some stuff this week. They've been very, very helpful. Always are. Yes. I still think Emily should be head of buying for the business. I know. I'm not entirely sure as we wouldn't just have things with unicorns that were pink and sparkly, though. Um, so there's clearly a market uh, for that. Perhaps not all of our demographic would want pink and sparkly. But every single one of them has a pink and sparkly unicorn lover yeah, in the family, I am sure. <laughs> and if not, I'm, am. I'm one of those people, so you can just send it to me. <laughs> so there we go. Remember, glue side down, glue side down. We pop that under there. You're going to pick and it up, John. Again. Prove the point. Boom, 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 ta -da! boom, 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 boom. There's always a ta-da moment. Exactly. Here it is. Exactly. Now, I'm not going to bore you by doing the entire quilt like Aww. this. We're going to do another two rows. Nice. Only because I think it's important that you can see the methodology and what we're doing. And my trusty assistant is now going to oh, move the iron always. away. Thank always, you, ma'am. Always, That lifting I'm not supposed to do. Right, this is deceptively light. It's not that heavy at all. Well, I was going to say, please don't hurt yourself. No. Right, right, so back with our Ooh, little board number of Number 16, now I love this one. This is cantaloupe. Oh, cantaloupe. Mm. It does make you feel like you should be eating all healthy. Yes. Right, and now I've got three ginger. Ooh, oh, lovely. No, we didn't cut the ginger as one piece, so we'll put those individually. Gorgeous. Two, three. So the way I've cut mine is I've cut three pieces like that. But if you wanted to cut a six by two inch piece, yep. it's exactly the same thing. So you're all fine there. What's number 44? Rain grey. Wow. How it's very actually, English. It's a very English colour that. <laughs> Rain grey. 45 graphite? Dark granite. Dark granite. You knew it was a... One of them. Gr One of the rocks. With it on the end. And then we've got pine. Well, that's our trusty pine, yeah. Trusty pine popping its little head in every now and then. And then we've got a plain We have, so peacock. that's our peacock. And then number 34 is light blue again. It is. Well done, John. You're remembering these very well. It is terrifying because I've got a, a number 30. I oh, don't now this is cornflower blue. Oh, that is so beautiful. Isn't it? It's really good. And the thing is, is you get an affinity for the different colours in here. You do. As I popped my head into the workshop a few minutes ago and noticed how many bolts of the cornflower blue you'd bought. Yeah. Because it is few. so beautiful. And now that <laughs> yellow, number 20. Pale yellow. Isn't mm -hmm. that just that little pop really of colour there? It's just so fun. Really pretty. 21. Dijon. 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 Ho, ho, ho. Uh, it's just to make me say it, really. Yeah. I love it. 15. Mustard. So Mus Dijon, Dijon, then and we got mustard. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, number thirty. Number thirty is our cornflower corn again. again. Yeah. And you can see we've now entered a bit more of a She's colourful a collection over here. I've got it. You see, you don't trust you, you don't trust don't. the movement of the tray. No. That not, is. I one never of those trust things. anybody with things no. like that. It can go possibly wrong. If it goes wrong, then it's my fault. Can you imagine if I dropped it? 
Well, you I'm not sure we'd still be friends. Well, of course we'd still be <laughs> friends. I think you might cry a little. No, not at all. I just stand and just watch wail. you put it back together. <laughs> 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 There's been no problem with that at all. <laughs> I'm not worried. Oh, dear. And again, you can see I'm not moving my iron at all. And we've done that for about five seconds. Five to eight seconds is what you're looking for for this to glue down. I would say five yeah. seconds because normally you, when you put the next row on, you are then putting some afterwards yes. as well. Now the point of the Teflon mat is to make sure that you're not allowing any of the glue section up there. I noticed that I was just a little bit low at that point. Mm -hmm. So that just gives me a little bit of time yeah. to remaneuver everything ever so slightly we over. Don't want a if you have iron. done what I've just done and moved everything ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. Just pop back in and check that nothing's moved substantially over here. Give it a little wiggle. Two of them. Yeah, just re reposition everything. Now, if you've got tiny little bits of white, like you can see over here, don't worry no. about that. It is not worryable at all. Worryable? Worryable. Amazing, it John. It is not a worryable Excellent situation. Excellent Englishing, John. Definitely. A1 Englishing. Uh, it's not worryable. The with my because <laughs> because of my African education, you know. <laughs> You're going to tell me now that this is an actual South African term, and I'm going to believe you because I am G for gullible. <laughs> worryable <laughs> is not a word, John, is it? Uh, well, it's worryable in my brain. Okay, that's fine. You so all know what I it's meant. Not, it's not worryable. It's um, it's a thing that will disappear you? in your scene. <laughs> that, little, that little white gap will disappear in your seam, won't exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. So, fret ye not. If you John are meant. using one of the new Alesso irons, I don't know whether you're able to just hold it down for five seconds, mm. but you need to make sure that you're not moving things around so quite so much. You've got that so contact. Much. I'm oh, do look. one more row. You're moving the iron. Well, no, you made me feel bad ah, because of your oh, back. So it's my neck more than my back. Back, neck, oh, arms, dear. legs, I know. feet. It's falling apart, John. Falling apart. Oh, no. Go way around. Oh, yes. Make sure okay. it's the right way. So we can see from this fold which way we need to keep it up, Indeed. can't we? Indeed. But over time, that would disappear. So that whole little tip of writing glue, not it glue. It really, really helps, I promise you. Yes. We're going to do one more row because I think I don't want to keep, you know, laboring the point. This is the most difficult section. The rows are numbered on the side, so we're now doing row number four. Gorgeous. And I think it's just important to just show you and just keep doing it. I think four rows is probably enough. I don't want to bore you too much. You um, never bore us, John. Oh, I don't know about it's that. It's quite hypnotic watching this. It, it, but it is terribly mindful to do. You know, we're all going through different things at different times, and we have moments where you just need to turn off and switch off hey. and just function in a different way. That middle, that third block in is beautiful, isn't it? It's gorgeous. We've got that our was ginger, but that was our rust in there. Rust, that was it. High calorie, mm. low calorie, rust. <laughs> oh, <we've> dust. <laughs> then we've got number cantaloupe. 16, which is our cantaloupe. That's, um, that's low calorie as well. Very, very low yeah. calorie. And then we're back to our ginger. ginger. So we've got Make me ginger, hungry. ginger, rust, ginger, cantaloupe, ginger. Yummy. And then Without number 16 the is back to cantaloupe. Yes. Cant is I it cantaloupe? Cantaloupe. I think, I think it's cantaloupe. I don't know. I'm going to call it cantaloupe. Oh, okay. Cantaloupe. You do that, John. This is number 26, which is fern green. Fern. The, I knew there was a fern Fresh, green. Fresh, isn't it? That fern green. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Fern. And then number 30 was our that light was our blue. Cornflower, cornflower blue. blue. Cornflower yeah. blue. Cornflower blue. And then number 37. Aubergine. Aubergine. It's very fruity and vegetables, isn't no, it? No, it's making me hungry. My tummy's rumbling. Well, I did tell you to get lunch. You but did. No. We were busy. This is lupine. Lupine is a Tilda classic, it and is. it's gorgeous. Lime and I know green. that it's lupine, not lupin. Lime lupine. green is. N oh, oh, yes, it is. It is lupine, not lupin. Uh, it is lupin. lupine. Yes, yes, no, it is. The lime green's not helping my hunger, is it? I love a zesty lime. 36. Lupine. And 34 is blue, light blue. Light blue. Yeah. So you can see what we're doing. You're just basically building all of these onto a sheet of Quilter's Grid to make that. Sure. And, and you can tell the pattern start to form of that beautiful big flower over there and the start of another flower over here. And it's only when you put five and six together that you see this beautiful f collection over there starting, and then you get the smaller buds over there. It just works so effortlessly to be it able really to do does. that. So we've done four rows of that. I'm going to now stitch these together. I'm going to glue these down so they're yeah. all in one piece. Sure. Do you know, John, that it is coming together 
really quickly. And isn't it does. It? It's just what you've got. Once you're, if you're organized and you actually just take the time putting everything in bags, getting everything laid out, you can do a block in an evening. And that sure. includes the stitching on it because it is really quick and simple to do. Brilliant. I just think it's one of those projects you can just stop and just unwind. Well, your lovely friend Stefan oh has goodness, got he, great guns but on But he this. literally picked it up on the Wednesday and it was finished with borders on the Thursday, on the Tuesday the following week. Which is the size of quilt. But he'd added an extra border, yeah. designed pillows. Dumb it pillows, was brilliant. Yeah. Stunning. Stunning. It's very talented. Yes. And determined. Indeed. I and think you know, insomnia plays didn't, a role. Didn't procrastinate. Because no. if we're completely honest, John, um, there is a huge, huge tendency, isn't there, for us as creatives to procrastinate. Well, I can't deny the quilt behind us, the Tracy Perk, yes. is made out of art theory. Okay. And the background is crochet, by tr uh, the Trinkets Collection and Crochet Collection mm -hmm. by Alison Glass. Yes. And Tracy came and bought that. And I then looked at this and said, oh my goodness, I love it. And then promptly did a similar purchase, okay. potentially. And that's been sitting in my um, to-do pile for almost a box, year. Yeah. No, to-do pile, I think that's kind of. <laughs> but the, the line between perfectionism and procrastination is, is, very, is fine. very fine. And sometimes we hold off doing things because, oh, I don't want to mess it up. And that's the beauty of this make, really, isn't it? Is that you you're are cutting. You're not going to mess it up. You're cutting all the squares the same everything. size. You don't have to worry about that. Nothing just at all. Cut everything the same. With the quilter's grid, you can fuse it yeah. on. You can leave it for a little while exactly. if you want to. You can pick it up. And the great thing is, is you can now, because this is going to be left. Now, it's a bit warm at the moment. I'm not going to do it at the moment. No. I'm going to waft it to cool it down just sure. a little. The only reason being is I don't want the glue from the rest of this to stick onto it. Sure. But all you do then, what I do think is important is take, sorry to stand on your right. foot there. Um, permanent marker, okay? Just in one of the corners, write five. Yeah. Okay, and top. And if you want to, just go one, two, three, because those are the first, second, and third row. Sure. Then you'll always know what it is. Lovely. Because it happens. You Clever. put it in a bag and you don't know where you are. No. So you just and literally you take that. You can look that. at the chart, because yeah. the chart will show exactly. you. But then you'll be doubting yourself. Exactly. So if you've labelled it as you've gone, exactly. and now it takes that fear out. you're ready to just put that to one side for as long as you need to do. And when you're ready to come back to it, you come back to it. Perfect. Now, we're going to assume now that you have done all eight of them. Uh, nine of nine them, of sorry. Them. Nine yeah, of them. absolutely. And now we're going to take a bit of time and talk about, and I'll probably just move this out of shot, but <laughs> let's no, see where we there. are. As to whether the close-up's going to behave. We will give it a go. I'm such a diva, John. Good me? Moving I don't the know machine what you around, mean. Making the place Making it your comfortable own. for me. <laughs> Honestly, I don't it's want this here. I all want about there. me, me, me. So what we've got over here, we've got numbers one, two, and three. Lovely. Number one, I hadn't stitched yet, nope. but two and three I had. Okay. If I could pass that over they to your good self. These ones. So what we're doing yeah. here is you will then have finished a piece like this, whether you've done the square method or whether you've done the method where you're not using squares and you're doing strips of fabric, this is what you're going to end up with. Fab. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start sewing. So when I fold this over, you can see I've got my two inch line there towards my two inch line. If you were doing this as a normal piecing, you would put right sides together, fold it and sew a quarter of an inch. You're doing exactly the same thing, just bigger. Great. <laughs> okay. Great. Now, remember, I am doing this standing up. I'm not at my usual sewing machine. I am terrified of the pins on the floor. I can't get the foot of the sewing machine to move. <laughs> Tasha's got it on a thing that stops it from sliding around on the floor. And of course, you've moved the machine. No, but she's also <laughs> got it back to front, upside down. Oh, yes. yes so I'm not sure if this but is going to work. But you know, this is what we do in our own exactly. space, isn't it? But you make it your own. Now, one of the best things on here is this. This is a marker for your quarter inch foot, your quarter inch seam. So if you've got a quarter inch foot, if you've got a quarter inch seam line marker, if you've got diagonal tape, whatever method you are using to do your quarter inch, I don't mind but I do mind if you change your mind. Be consistent the yes. whole way through. It is the only important thing that you have to do in this project is be consistent. Consistency is key. It really is. And you can go as fast or as slow as you prefer. 
There is no rush. Just take your time. Getting this quarter inch seam consistent the whole way along is vital. And it's yeah. consistency that is the key. And you know, you can fire through this, John. This machine is oh, our gosh, yes. TL2020. The only reason I'm doing it, not going as full, well, yeah. the, the only reason I'm not going full pelt is I'm standing, balancing on one foot, trying not to fall over. <laughs> and a machine that's not yours. This exactly. is the TL well, I've got this machine, but I haven't got uh, the Platinum Edition. Yes, now this is the 2020, so the, you've got the 2200 Just then. before you do that, yeah, so yeah, what I'm course. doing now, I've sewn the first oh, seam, no. but what I'm going to do now is I'm not sewing them all in the same direction. So uh, I then clever. flick this round, fold it onto, so I pull this out. You can see I pull that out, lay it flat, yes. find my next two inch line, Do not and then I it. go back the other way. Makes sense. The first two or three are the hardest, making sure you don't trap it. Of course. But once you've done three lines, you're normally okay. Great. So Gemma, this machine. No, it's fine. So yeah, this is the TL2020 Platinum Edition. Um, you've got the 2200. They are both what we affectionately refer to here as the mini Beautiful. beast. Beautiful. <laughs> the mini beast. And they're, they're a semi-industrial machine, aren't they, John? They are. So they will take a job like this and laugh in its face, fire on through, and you can go, you know, all kinds of... And if it is giving you any problems, you haven't cleaned your machine or the needle's dull. Correct. That's it. <laughs> yes. They're not, they're not a high-maintenance, diva-ish type machine, are they? <laughs> they are low-maintenance and not even slightly diva-ish. Rude. Unlike some. Um, so yes, no, they, they, they're very um, I think gorgeous. Easy bit like you, really. Oh, so now we've done two lines. Adaptable. Flexible. Fabulous. Flexible. Flexible. They iron, dust, clean, to everything else. Amazing. So all we're doing now is we're going the other way. Brilliant. I've turned it round and exactly like before, quarter of an inch seam all the way along. Lovely. And just making sure you keep consistent. And you can see as you get to sort of three, the fold is a lot easier as you go along. Okay. Lovely. So I'll do another two rows of this because you'll then you'll have the idea of what we're doing. Okay, but it is important, even though you've got the stabilizer sure. in it, to keep changing direction, because anybody who's ever sewn things back up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, you can end up with a bow. And yeah. even though you've got the stabilization in it, make sure you're alternating. It doesn't do you any harm no. whatsoever. The first two or three might be a little bit tricky, but honestly, it's a lot easier doing it this you way. You just have to make sure those previous rows stay out of the way and that it's nice exactly. and flat, don't you? But once exactly. you've got a few rows in, you can see already, this just lays that exactly, way anyway. Because as I do it like that, it's you behaving. can see it's already behaving yeah, yeah, perfectly yeah. at that I point. I can see that. But we're also losing those joints in this seam allowance, which logically exactly. makes sense. But when you're putting these on the quilter's grid and you're seeing those little gaps, it's really, really easy to OCD all over the place, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. So now you'll see as I do that. There we go. Let's have a look on the overhead. You can see all the gaps between it have been yeah. caught in the seam allowance. So now I've got the odd little gap along here. Yeah which I'm not even considering worrying about yeah. because when I go and do the lines going the other way, yeah. they will just completely disappear. But any little gaps like this here, when you've placed exactly. those. Uh, the only uh, thing uh, I will uh, say is that if your gap like that one there is a little large, mm -hmm. what I would say is that if it's too large, if that was a quarter of an inch, yeah. I would then just put a little bit of fabric in the middle there. Of but course. if you haven't, don't worry because no. the stabilizer is your friend. You're getting yes. that extra stability from the stabilizer to be able to catch it in your seam. Sure. So all we're doing now is we're going side to side to side to side the whole way down. Yes. And we're going to pretend that this is number one, but it's not. This is number three. So you're going to have this. Now, you can see there are little bits of thread. Don't worry, because you will trim those down later. Yeah. So here we are. We have now got number, this is number three. We've now sewn everything like that. Okay, you can Lovely. see I've sewn it that way. Hang on, I just have to do this. I know. That's very satisfying. But it feels so good. Amazing. Because as a stabilizer that stays in. Yes. 
It's going to add to the warmth of your quilt. It's going to add to the stability of your quilt, the longevity of it. And it just feels lovely. It really does. So what I've done now, that's numbers one and three. Yeah. So we're just putting those to one side for the moment. And what I've done is number two. Number two, I have sewn these all together, but what I've also done is I have pressed them to one side. Lovely. Now, there are many ways of doing this. There is no right and wrong, it's what pr you prefer. I started chenilling these to open these up to be able to press my seams open. The chenilling thing, it is entirely your choice. I personally don't like the chenilling, th the chenilling technique. I don't mind having the extra bulk. I have a long arm quilting machine. It quilts through three layers of leather with no problem and I then have no issue whatsoever worrying about there being a little lump of stabilizer in there sure. because I know my machine will go through it fine. I run it slowly, I put a bigger needle in, it'll be fine. John, can we just explain what we mean by the chenilling So chenilling, technique? what we've done here, if we go onto a close-up over here. Overhead or close-up? Uh, close-up, if that's okay. What we've done is I've sliced the seam open. So if you wanted to, you could then press that seam open. And by doing that, when you press that seam open, you've gotten rid of a lot of the bulk sure. of when you're doing a quilting. Because here, this I haven't chenilled open, when I stitch that down, it's going to have a big lump of fabric there. Yeah. Now, I'm not bothered by that. For me, that doesn't worry me because that little lump of fabric, I know my machine, I may miss a stitch in that. And I'm okay because for me, finished is better than perfect. And I'm okay with that. So... For me, that works fine. But what I am concerned about is when I do do this, sorry if I'm going overhead. Of course. Um, when I do this, that these, we try our best to have them going in the same direction. Yes. So when you look at it from the front of the quilt, I have pressed my seams going up okay. the quilt. That's just what I did. There's no right or wrong. You can go up, down, you can do whatever you like. You can press them open. We have got chenilas online. You can look in the website and see if there's anything that you want to try. It's a really great little technique. For me, it didn't work, and that doesn't mean that there was nothing, anything wrong with it. It just didn't work for me. Personal it's just the same as we may use different threads and different needles. Mm -hmm. It's nothing about there being anything wrong with it. It's just not what I would prefer to do. And also, because I don't need to worry about the bulk, I'm happy with that. Just as some will use the quilter's grid, some won't. and some might say, I bought the kit, I'll pop the quilter's grid to one side exactly. because I want to cut all of this and I want to piece it in the traditional exactly. way. The only thing we will say with that is it's more time consuming. Exactly. But if you've got all the time in the world and Fantastic. you enjoy traditional piecing, this is a lovely project. It really stuff. is. But the, with the pressing, however you do it, whether you're doing the end of the, mm -hmm. uh, be consistent. Sure. So if you want to nest your seams, you're going up, down, up, down, up, down, you do it however works for you. For me, I'm pressing them all up. Lovely. Because I know when I quilt it, I'm going to be quilting it sideways, doing li straight line quilting, and it's going to go left, right, left, right, left, right. So for me, it doesn't really matter. Now what we've done is so we've already stitched the lines going this way. We're now going to do exactly what we did before when we were stitching the other way, but I'm just going to fold it and go on the first two-inch line well, let's over see what that here. Looks like. Okay. Now, with not having cut the squares, it does get a little more difficult to fold this over because you haven't got that automatic crease yeah. because you haven't cut the squares. Um, so just take a little bit of time and press that down and, and make John, sure it works. Could you perhaps pop quilt clips on there? Yeah, yeah and absolutely. And then whip them off as you absolutely, go. Absolutely, absolutely. But the thing is, it's so easy to see because yeah. the line is on the side. And to make your life easier, try and go down yeah. so that your first seam automatically the stitches are going to be going down anyway. The seams are going down anyway. Okay. And just take your time on this for the first time to get used to it. And you can hear when your machine's going through that little lump of fabric and the stabilizer. You've got that very comforting. Dum -dum. It's like a heartbeat. Isn't but it, it is. That's exactly Dum -dum. it. Yep. It really is. It really is a little heartbeat, heartbeat isn't it? As it comes to life. Now, one thing is people who have made this project have actually said they've not pressed the quilt at all and using the quilter's grid until such time as they are actually finished with the project because they found it easier for them. There is no right or wrong. I personally pressed it and you must do what works best for you. There is no right or wrong on it. Okay, so that's the first scene going Lovely. that way. Now remember, I'm changing direction each time I go. So I'm doing exactly the same thing, folding that down on the two inch line. 
moving that down a bit on the two inch line and now I'm going down this way. Brilliant. Lining the quilter's grid up to my quarter inch point so and just being as consistent as I can The be. quilter's grid, John, each square represents an inch. Exactly. Uh, yes, each, each square on the grid, yes. Yeah. So handy, isn't it? It really is. And it's also very forgiving, especially for beginners. In case you're a little bit nervous, you're not sure what you're doing. Yeah. It's just so much, it just gives you that safety of knowing that you're going to have a really lovely seam. This isn't going to be finished in this tutorial, but what I'm going to show you once we finish this, uh, we'll do another three lines of this. Yeah. You'll be able to see how, how satisfying it is looking at all of these different straight lines all the way down, and you haven't really had squares for a lot of the background no. fabric, but because of the quilter's grid and you're stitching on that point, you will then be able to do that from there. Right, come on you. Give you a little sneak peek of what I'm talking about. Oh, it's so clever. So you can see over here, you didn't have squares. You didn't have squares over here. No. These were all long strips of fabric. And yeah. look, now all of a sudden you've got squares. You have. Clever. It's fabulous. Clever, clever. So we've now got, we'll do two more rows and you can then Great. see how this goes. But I think by at least seeing the way that I've done that, you can see how simplis simplistic it is using the quilter's grid being able to do this. Because Tracy's projects as well, lean very well towards the quilter's grid. They do. Absolutely do you have the they do. The stag pattern there. We do, do you know, because we've got the stag behind us, but we do have oh, a course. stitched stag. So we'll have a look at that in a second. So therapeutic watching this come together. It, but it's so lovely to do as well. Well, it, it, the lines are there to tell you. Exactly. It's almost like cheating. And the thing is as well, if you do, <laughs> and also be kind to yourself, if you have made a little bit of an adjustment and you haven't kept straight on the line, that's fine. One little block will be slightly out. So just correct it on the next block. It's not going to be a big problem because you'll fix it in one seam and no one's going to notice. Not quite. And you can then Quite. see that those three lines going down there have helped. And you can tell you've now got the squares in there, Brilliant. even though it's a long strip of fabric. Amazing. Amazing. And, so and that's what how is, we're starting doing these. You know, so what is the need to cut all those little squares? Exactly. Just those great big long strips and you'd never know the difference. Never in a million. So the plan clever, for this clever. is, it like, do you want to, let's have a look at that stag and you can see how sure. effective that works with the stag. Sure, sure. So should we, should we hold it up this Indeed. way first and then we can lay it down in a moment? Two seconds, ma'am. Two oh, seconds. Of course. Because I find if I tidy away you, at the time, yeah, sure. and I do need to put my shoe on. Just because one I have, shoe. <laughs> having one shoe, you feel a little lobsided. You're not in your slippers today. It makes I know, I left them at home. John, then. I've got a little step, and I, oh, I'm not proud, you know. Don't be you silly. are taller than me. Here we go. <laughs> so that is using the quilter's grid. You've created the same thing, but I think the most fabulous thing to be able to show you once we've gotten Gemma down off her perch. Absolutely, yes. I'll take that, ma'am. Do you know, this is lovely, isn't it's it? It's gorgeous. This is the Lock Lewis range. And You've still got a couple of these in you know, stock, I'm, don't we? I think let's we hope do. by the time we go to wear, let's see, but the bumbleberries oh, and the stag itself. Love, love it. Love, love, love. And you can see on the back here, even from it's the front. It's been in storage, hasn't it? There's a bit no, of No, but you can tell how simple it is to have just stitched yeah. them on. And this is what you're going to look like when you've finished all nine of your sheets. Yeah. Obviously, the difference will be on there. But having the squares on, it's just such a lovely product and it feels lovely now obviously 28 inches is the width uh, 36 inches is the width of it this is bigger than 36 inches so piecing it together you can tell is really simple because all yeah. you do is you put the two pieces together and you sew it down 
We'll get into that in it's the next brilliant, episode. Brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. But just and such a gorgeous colourway yeah, for this pattern. Like we say, it, again, it's squares and half square triangles. So for those people who do want to try to create a, a, a design, mm. this is a really simplistic way of doing that because Tracy has made it. It's but brilliant. Everyone can make something. But the other way of doing it as well, because you can see this colourway there, but you can see in the black and the um, Alison Glass art theory, it's yeah. a gorgeous collection. This, and it's such a lovely way of being able to show how, univ how uh, universal this product is. The other thing to consider with this is um, bargellos, being able to use up little squares of fabric. So if you've got We've all got scraps. Mm. You just need it to be an inch wide. And you can put all your pieces of scraps down, press them down, stitch them. You've got a piece, a new piece of fabric. You can make clothing out of yeah. that. We've seen people do, they've had um, runway catwalks yeah. with the, we're using the quilter's grid with all the different amazing sure. colours on the back. Jackets or bags exactly. or, you know, we've, you, we've used it for bags. It's been brilliant Oh, it's a fabulous product. And also when you've got, you know, those little mini charm packs, those yes. tiny mini charm packs, and you pick them up and you're like, they're so little. And what do I Quilter's do with grid. them? Exactly. Quilter's grid is, is your friend. You know, it it's absolutely fabulous. It really is. Ah, oh, John. So we've now done another episode in this series. We we've got have. a couple more to go. We um, have. Maybe a little bit of a gap now to make sure that you catch up. Yes. Um, then you're going to be able to do, if you can do nine of them, don't put them together just yet because our next episode is, we're going to put the rows together. We are. And then the episode after that is going to be the the putting the blocks together into rows and then putting the rows together into the quilt. Yeah. And we've still got some fun after that as well. Oh, We're absolutely, absolutely. We're going to be with you every step of the way. Completely. So and any questions, please drop us a line. We can only help with when, when we know what you need. You pull that straight out. Completely. It's, just it's, about, be, it's like we're working in... Uh, we've got synergy, you see. Oh, you see, John, that's how it is. <laughs> so, yes, Probably the hunger and exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> Hungry, exhausted, both of us are on the same page, aren't we, John? We are. And warm. Warm yes, also. It is a little hot Quite in here warm. today. Yes, very so, uh, yes, we are, we've done stage one, we've done stage two. We will be back with you for stage three, but just feel brave. If you haven't give done your cutting, go. catch it up. Give it a go. If you're using your quilters grid and you've got any questions, fire us, fire us a message. Absolutely. Info at natashamakes.com. And just remember those little important things, getting your needles, giving your machine a little clean out. We've got oil, we've got maintenance packs, we've got the pressing mats, the um, Teflon sheets. The Teflon sheets are really helpful These for These things, once you've got them, will make all the difference. And, and no one Teflon needs a gum pie in. But the tef Teflon sheets last years. They do, and no one needs a gum pie in. No. It's no fun But make sure all. you write glue, not glue. Glue, not glue. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. <laughs> get cracking. We'd love to see everyone's progress. Exactly. We hope you'll share the pictures on social media as well. Definitely. Uh, SJ likes to see these things also, you know. <laughs> and we will be back with you for creating some rows. I know. It would be really good. Very exciting. Look Thank after you so yourselves. Much for being with us. And please remember, be in kind to yourself. If you make a mistake, it's a mistake. Yes. Be kind. This is meant to be fun, mindful and enjoyable. And you, I promise you, you will enjoy it. True. If not, Always send it to Gemma, she'll finish it off for you. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> You've not seen my UFO pile. I mean, it's not as extensive as yours, I'm sure. However, however, John. Don't send it to don't Gemma, send that it was to a me. joke. Definitely not. <laughs> oh, lovely to have you with us again, John. Nice to be here. And uh, you'll be back very soon. Definitely. And bye bye. You will too. Bye bye.